Romans 12 and verse number 2. Let's go, everybody, look on your screens. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share about transformation tonight. <coughs> Hallelujah. Transformation as the key to your new season. The key to your new season. Transformation as the major key into your new season. Hallelujah. I want us to participate in the mighty name of the Lord. Say transformation. I want to share about transformation as the major key into your new season. Hallelujah. Listen, there are seasons that will come your way. But there are some seasons that are major which will require that you enter into them. Hallelujah. Okay. Revelation chapter number 3 and verse number 8. Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 8. Let's look at Revelation. There are seasons that will come to you. But there are some other seasons that you'll have to go into. The Bible says that Revelation chapter number... Okay, it says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. Hallelujah. There are seasons that require those to enter into them. Ah, am I having a witness here? There are seasons that will require that doors open for you to enter into. Are you following? Hallelujah. And these seasons... And these doors will require keys. So transformation is one of the keys. In fact, it is the major key for you to enter into your season. Hallelujah. Into your season. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shared here, the word transformation is a Greek word metamorphosis, which means to metamorphosize. You can picture it um, by understanding the stages of a butterfly hallelujah and we share that the stages of a butterfly it begins from an egg then where do you go to lava then pupa and then butterfly praise god so through those stages in the face of time the, 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 the this 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 thing is transformed it is metamorphosized from one image, one looking into another. Praise God. So this transformation actually, praise God, I can stand and um, I, can, I can define my own definition transformation as the state or the process by which one's form or nature is radically altered from within resulting into the newness of character appearance and lifestyle did you get it transformation i could define that it is the states of the process by which one's form or nature is radically altered from within hallelujah from within not from outside but from within, therefore resulting into the newness of character, the newness of appearance, and the newness of lifestyle or purpose. Hallelujah. Say here. Come on, someone say here. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you gotta be transformed. Uh -uh, tell him like you, you, you uh, say, neighbor, you need to be transformed. Hallelujah. When you talk about transformation, it is not just you changing your cloth, not just you changing your name. 
It is not just you being called some other name and then saying, ah, this name was from my ancestor and I know my ancestor was a witch. Now I want this name because this one is good. No, it's not about the name. It's not about the physical change. It is something that is born within you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at the egg of um, a butterfly. This egg is tender and is, is, is in the cocoon. Praise God. But within that egg, there is some process that is happening. Hallelujah. Within the egg of a butterfly, though it is in a cocoon, though outwardly, there is less or little change or little activity that we can see. But within the egg, there is a merging. A merging. Hallelujah. There is a merging of things within the egg. As time goes by, Within the egg, there is a merging. Fluids are reconnecting. Life is being born. Hallelujah. And things are forming. Parts of these things being formed. Hallelujah. As it forms from one stage to another stage, we find now the egg changes. Hallelujah. It becomes what? It becomes a lava. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And from this, we think that this thing has reached Yet, in the process of time, somebody say, in the process of time, I am moving from that poor person you knew into a millionaire, into a landlord, into an employ, em, employer, in Jesus' name. If you believe it, I want you to celebrate the Lord in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, in the process of time, what you need is time. Time that is allocated by God for your transformation. This lava, after a moment of time, we see legs coming out. We see a tail appearing, a small tail. We see the color changing. It becomes a pupa. It's like a maggot. Are you following? Hallelujah. And from now, again ahead, we see colors flapping out. And now this thing that was earthbound, begins to fly. You shall fly in the name of Jesus Christ. Because of this transformation service, receive the grace to fly. Receive the grace to go with speed in the mighty name of the Lord. I say you shall fly. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you, you are not going to see me again in the place where I used to be. Because I am growing wings today. Somebody you are growing wings. Somebody your business is growing wings. Somebody, your family situation, ah, it is changing tonight in the mighty name of the Lord. Because you are beginning to be transformed. The people that knew you as um, somebody, somebody, ah, your, even your character is going to change. Your habit is going to change. Why? Because of metamorphosis. Hallelujah. Say metamorphosize. Come on, someone say metamorphosize. I can't hear you now. Say metamorphosize. Some sickness that has been known in your family is going to escape your body because of metamorphosize in the mighty name of the Lord. Some challenges that has been pursuing you. The Bible says that the Lord God told, God told Moses that this Pharaoh you are seeing, you shall see him no more. There are some things that have been pursuing you. Some challenges. That have refused to let you go tonight because of this service you shall see a new you in the name of the lord i say you shall be changed in the mighty name of the lord you shall be changed in the mighty name of the lord that's why the bible says in the book of second corinthians chapter number three and verses number 18 that we also with an open face beholding as one in a mirror our change our metamorphosized from one glory to another. Ambia mwenzako, I am moving from glory to glory. Mambia na, na inuka kutoka utukufu hadi mwingine. Tell him or her I am moving. Say my situation is changing tonight. Say my family is moving from glory to glory. Declare it is my new season. Say it is my new season. Say it is my new season. Say victory I have received. Hallelujah. Hey, metamorphosize. 
Transformation as the key into your season. Into your season. Into your season. Hallelujah. I want to submit to us tonight, friends, that the reason, the major reason that caused Jesus to come on the earth was for you to be changed. Was for you to be metamorphosized. Say here. Hallelujah. So salvation is a journey into metamorphosizing. A journey into transformation. Say here. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Hallelujah. Say my life is changing. My destiny is changing. Everything by my, everything around my life is changing. In Jesus' name. Okay, let's look at Second Corinthians chapter number five, verse number seventeen, so that you may understand. Are you getting this word? I pray for you that you shall receive the grace to change. To be shifted, to be transformed in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So for you to understand this scripture, let's look at John chapter number 1 verse 15. John 1, number 12. John 1, verses number 12. Hallelujah. The Bible says that in John chapter 1 and verses number 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe in his name. Hallelujah. So God after he presented his son Jesus Christ on the earth when he went to the cross and died hallelujah died the death of shame died carrying your iniquity and your sin now you are left with an opportunity to claim all your uh, all your divine uh, all, all your divine presence by what? by receiving Christ hallelujah you are left by you claiming your divine benefits. Do you know your benefits? You are left to, to now claim, legally acquire your divine allocations by you receiving Christ in your heart. So the Bible says that now when you receive him, you now are given power to become. Hallelujah. The word become there is a continuous process of changing. From one lesser you to another higher upgraded version of yourself. Say, I am becoming. Come on, somebody. say, I am becoming. Say, my life is becoming. Say, my family is becoming. Say, my business is coming. Come on, somebody. say, my career is becoming. It means you are growing progressively. Hallelujah. You are not retrogressing. You are not moving back. The devil want you to move back. The devil want to take things from you so that you become more poorer and poorer and poorer. More sicker and sicker unto death. But when God is in you, the Bible says that I have come that you may get life and life abundantly. I prophesy to somebody tonight. The life of Christ shall be in you beginning tonight. You are being transformed into a better version. So you received Christ. How many of you have received Christ? You lift up your hand. You claimed you have received Christ. You have... Hallelujah. You have this promise. Ah, Jesus Christ. Tonight, if you have not received Christ, don't worry. You are going to receive Christ tonight. Hallelujah. But as well. Hallelujah. Say transformation. As key. As key. To, in, into my new season. Your new season needs to be open. There are doors that close, that lock, that close, that lock the, the season. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, behold, I am standing. I am standing at your door. There is a door that has been given you. It has your name. Hallelujah. When you are transformed, you can enter the door with grace. <laughs> I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the grace to transform. 
I said receive the grace to transform in Jesus name so salvation is a process of becoming hallelujah that's why the Bible says that little children I write to you I write to you because you know no sin and he says that even and when you sin you have an advocate so sometimes it's not in the perfection of your righteousness before God it is in your yielding to God that gives you opportunity to be transformed last year there are things that you will, you will not easily go past you fell under some sin you fell some bad but as you move as you move through the process you now begin to overcome you overcome things that were so hard for you to live they just now decide to leave you hallelujah you grow into a better version of you i pray for you tonight in the name of the lord receive the grace to grow into a better version i say receive the grace of god to grow into a better version in the mighty name of the lord Jesus christ hallelujah jesus christ when he came on the earth he came so that we may be transformed he came so that we may be transformed hallelujah say transformation he came so that we may be transformed and you see friends your life has a value on it but for that value to be evaluated okay and gain its place on the earth here you have to go through transformation am i speaking to somebody your life has value on it but for that value to be properly evaluated and accredited to gain a position on the earth you have to go through transformation hallelujah praise god say tonight i receive the grace to transform in jesus name so when christ died he gave you an opportunity to claim your divine benefits hallelujah the bible says that the benefits that god has hidden for his children in the book of psalms it says greater are the benefits that god has hidden the bible says that no eye has seen nor ear heard the things that god has stored for his children for those that fear him hallelujah you are not on earth here by accident listen to me young man listen to me young lady hallelujah listen to me my friend you are not here by accident hallelujah god has predestinated you god has prearranged your benefits for you to access and live there is a divine supply ahead of you i know yes you go through some struggles won't you today make up your mind and declare lord i will be transformed lord i need this thing called transformation i want to move into a new knowledge into a new version of who i am today hallelujah praise god transformation praise god say transformation everything concerning you has been given has been supplied do you know how god behaves with his children can i tell you in a simple matter is like a lady who is pregnant okay and she's going to hospital for checkup why is she going to the hospital for checkup because she wants the baby to be okay she wants her health to be okay so that she may her health so that she may not threaten the baby so to her the blessing the baby is a blessing okay hallelujah is a certain place of country i think in western where they call pregnancy muzigo i don't know if in your place you call that okay say my mini akona muzigo this is not a it's not a burden it is a a blessing hallelujah so god when he's engaging you is engaging on the basis of you being his blessing hallelujah what is blessing 
is something that is admirable. Something that is precious. Hallelujah. Something that is valuable. So to God, you are valuable. To God, you are admirable. Hallelujah. Say, I am admirable. Say, I am valuable. Say, I am precious to God in Jesus' name. So that is a blessing. So a, a woman goes to hospital every season for checkup. And now when she comes back and the, uh, the, 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 the days are coming forth for her to put to, to put to bed, okay? She now gets a saving that she has kept, okay? And accesses and takes money and goes shopping. What, why is she shopping? She's now you know, not even shopping for herself. She's shopping for the baby. Hallelujah. So when the baby is born, diapers are there. Hallelujah. Rompers are there. Hallelujah. Sweaters are there. Hallelujah. Boshori. Unajua boshori. Ili ya kwewa kichwa, ili ya baridi, ili ya kikuyo, iko hapo. Blanketi, iko. Bana asifiwe. Even the bed is there. Hallelujah. The feeding, the feeding, the feeding uh, utensils that are specifically for the baby, they are there. What is the woman doing? She's providing. She's supplying before the baby comes. God has supplied before you came on the earth. He has already made sure that there is an economy that is supposed to sponsor your advancement. There is an economy that is put in place that will make sure that you are not supposed to struggle and peradventure a situation arise, he will rise up to help you. That is our God. Why? Because you are precious, you are admirable, and you are a blessing. Say, I'm a, I'm a blessing. Say, I'm a precious. Say, say, I am precious. I can't see saying, say, say, I am precious. I am admirable. I am valuable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, when the baby is born, everything that happens around the baby, it takes the concentration of 99% of the lady, the woman, the one who has given birth. So that the baby may not be endangered. And she was, let me ask you women, if you will give birth and the baby is two days, are you able just to place the baby on the corridor? Come on, Akitu Merusha to Chini up, 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 while tiles now, Menda, Kwamba, Acha Niende, Ni, Kwapa, Apa, Apa, Kwachoki Dogo, I love Nirudi Mchukwe. Oneza Fanya, you? Kwanini? Eh? She's vulnerable, isn't you? And she's also precious. But that's where you make sure the temperatures are correct for the baby to be okay. You make sure where's the end of Sokoni we much of Toto Kwanyumba. No. Your heart is telling you, no, I can't be that far with my baby. That is how God behaves with you. Because you're precious. If I speak to somebody, hallelujah. So in the journey of God walking within that manner. He wants you to grow. He wants you to transform. He wants you to get to a place where you metamorphosize. Because every stage of your life has a supply that has been made for you to acquire. But you cannot get that supply except you grow. Say tonight, I must grow. I will metamorphosize. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Praise God. There are some kinds of shoes that you cannot give to your child. Okay? One last way. Hallelujah. Mtoto akiwa mizibili, unaweza mnulia pumps. Pumps. Zinaitwa pumps. Unaweza mbaya pumps. Eh? Two months. Unaweza mbaya nguo ya visco cotton. I'm, I'm old school, okay? Kuna nguye na ilikuwa inaitwa visco cotton. Unakumbuka kama kuna watu, unakumbuka visco cotton. Nyi mnajua tu chiffon. Na hii ingine. Eh? Bana sifuwe. Hello? You cannot, so there are things that are very beautiful and they are good. But the baby cannot behold them. Why? Because the baby has not grown. 
Say tonight, I receive grace to transform, to grow in Jesus' name. Many of the prayers you are making and crying to God desperately, God is looking and watching at you and asking himself, why have you not taken, why have you not taken, why have you not taken, hallelujah, or why have you not taken heed to grow, hallelujah. So listen, there are some answers to your prayer that do not require crying and praying. They require you to grow. You grow into the place of the answers that you have of the prayers you've been making. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Say tonight, I choose to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some specific victories of battles that God has already fought for you and he has reserved the victory. And so as you grow, he unleashes you with the victory. Say tonight, I choose to grow. Uh, transform. You can't afford to be the same, same lady, the same, same man of the version of 2007. And you are holding on to history. And whenever there comes up a conversation, you quote things that was spoken in the year 2007. You behave the way you behaved in the year 2007. You put on shoes and cloth that you put on during those days and you'll be like, ha, iyo siku najua ilikuwa nga ni flembe. Fle, ya, troza ilikuwa nga nili akusweep the road. Hindi ilikuwa nga yetu. Ah, ah, things have changed. Ambia mwenzako neighbor, things are changing. If you don't change, you become old school. Ata pesa. Amoni pesa ime badlika. Nani anajua pesa ime change? Ile pesa ilikuwa kubwa kama hii handkerchief. Listen, even ID cards. National ID cards. Do you remember those big yellow kipande? Ilikuwa nga yendra kipande. Siku za moe. Hii watu mkumu. Nyinu wa Kenya kweli. Hallelujah. Unajua kulikuwa na ID inaitwa kipande. The other day I was telling my wife that during those days voting was line. Unasimama hivi kwa line. For leni. One account siku za kanu. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Aya, huyu amepata seven. Banas fair. Things are changing. Angalia saizi, ata pesa ikuwa kwa bank. You don't need to physically visit the bank. Ata kuchukua loan, uneza apply with your phone. Ene inakuja sayo sayo. Ni wewe umekata kuchange. Hallelujah. Nani akona Nokia 33 na hapa, lift up your hand. If you have that phone, Nokia, it was a powerful phone. That one, when you had it, wewe ndulukuanga mwenye unajua mambo. Aikuwa na Ariel, the first phone, bila Ariel. Inuwa mkono. Nokia, you don't have, why don't you have that phone? Because things have changed. And you are refusing to change. If you refuse to change, change will knock you down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight, God is going to give you grace to transform. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I want to list a few things that will help you transform. Number one, transformation is by number one, you as a person hosting desire within you. Say, I want to host desire. Proverbs chapter number 18 verse number 1. For you to be transformed, you need to host desire. Ambea mwenzako neighbor, you need to host desire. Where is this person, eh? Say you need to host desire. Hallelujah. There are so many opportunities around about you, but if your desire is locked, you will not have a, you will not have a push into the place of your opportunity. Are you getting it? This man, the Bible calls him Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. Hallelujah. 
And this man was seated on the road and he was a beggar. Hello? And he heard that Jesus was passing. Possibly there are so many people who had passed on that road. Possibly it was not the first time that Jesus had passed on that road. Possibly it was told of him many other times about the power that Jesus had to change his story. But he had just not hosted enough desire to push him into the place of wanting the change. Hallelujah. So desire is a strong conviction of your soul that drives you to want something so bad. Say tonight, I desire change. Bible says, through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. Lift up your hand and say, Lord Jesus, grant me desire. Grant me desire. In Jesus' name. A strong conviction of your soul that will drive you to want, to want it, to want it. Unless you want it, it will not be given you. The things of the Spirit are given you, but then for them to legally come into your atmosphere, you must now receive them. And one of the ways through which you can activate receiving of the things that have been given you, is for you to want. God created man, the Bible says, and then he breathed his spirit into man. And the Bible says that and man became a living soul. That living soul has a mind, a, a mind, huh? come on somebody, mind, emotions, huh? and will. Okay, so I can, I can huh? your soul. Do you know about your soul? Do you know emotions are, is a language of your soul minus your soul you will be like a robot you don't have emotions that means you cannot relate with your friends your family you can't feel what they are going through you can't sense eh? are, are you following say soul so inside our soul hallelujah there's a place of one thing a place that activates this desire. Am I speaking to somebody? Let's look at, um, you know, because many times you have known desire to be a bad thing. Eh? Because you have related desire with things of the flesh. But desire is a fragment that God has set aside in your body to communicate activation of the things of God that will put you to a place of transformation. Mark chapter number 11 and verse number 24. Am I speaking? Are you getting it? My prayer today for you is that you begin to be transformed. On Sunday we'll be meeting here and I'm looking at you I'm like, ah, you look different. Are you a uh, first timer? Say, daddy, I've been here for the last three Sundays. I'll be like, ah, God has done something. Not just in suits. Not just in makeup, but you glow with glory. Say my glory. That shall be your portion in the name of this Christ. Bible says, therefore I sent you whatsoever thing that you desire. Do you have somebody who desires something here? You desire, is there anything that you desire? Until desire is birthed within, from within your spirit, it is not easy to be changed. It's not easy to be transformed. Listen, the body of a man, okay? The human body, the human body is an enemy of change. Ata asubui imefika na nisa moja. Baru nasema acha nilale kidogo. Acha nilale kidogo dakatano. Inafika sa moja unusu. Ah, undo unavuta blanketi vizuri. You don't want change. The body refuses change until it is put on some relevant pressure. Hello? Are you following? Praise God. Until pressure 
is applied on your body. For example, unenda kunamuka hivi, unapata, hey, you have five minutes do vika ofisini. Huh? Unamuka nga na msuwa, hata kuna ingina na chukua tu dayameno waneka kwa kidole, wanaeka na kumdome hivi wakikunyo maji wakiendanga. Na marashi, they don't even shout. Wameenda, wamevaa kiatumoji ya red, ingine ya black. Because of pressure. Hallelujah. Udona venye wa Kenya wa wana BF. The way Kenyans BF, eh? Uh, we online, eh? Kenyans last, this last minute thing is pressure. They like operating under pressure. Huh? Nambi, okay, mwende mchukwe, eh? Elikuwa nini? Zile, what was they called? Uh, that, those, uh, uduma number. <laughs> the Kenyan is like, ah, man, this time, this time, the last day, Unamuta mka, amamuka four, akopale kwa line. Anafikendo wa kwanza, anapata kuna line ya watu 500. What were you doing the other day? Pressure. They like Kenyans operate under pressure. I think kama kuna gitu tunaweza fanya vizuri, ni kama pressure mekua introduced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God give you grace to go above pressure in the name of Jesus Christ. So you have to bath and host desire within you. Separate yourself. Set yourself apart. Be at a place of prayer. Tell God, Father, I need you to bath within me and give me capacity to host desire. Such a kind of push that is godly, a push towards godly things. Because Kunawatu, can I say it? We are people whose desire is ungodly. Every single day you wake up, the only thing that you desire is those bad stuff. You need to go to, you need to lift up your hand everybody. Say, Lord Jesus, purify my desire. Sanctify my desire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So transformation is captured by people who desire to be transformed. Let's look at some, let's look at some, uh, some, some story here. Okay? Um, open the Bible in the book of um, 2 Kings chapter number 7 and verses number 3. 2 Kings. Are you being blessed? Are you being blessed? 2 Kings chapter number 7 and verse number 3. Okay, let's go. Okay, everybody look at the screens. Let's read number 1, 2, go. And there were four lepers, leprous men, at the entering in of the gates. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Praise God. These were outcasts according to the law of Moses. What was this law? If anybody contacted leprosy, he was to be alienated so that the thing should not spread. Okay? So, the only way of alienation was that even if you are mighty, you are a good businessman, you had millions, you are giving big tithe, you are to be cast outside the city, away from your family. It was, listen, leprosy was bad than COVID. Are you following? Because I could want to quarantine. This one was, you were cast outside the city. This is a Nairobi city, unatuko happy. Ngong forest. Are you following? Hello? So, the Bible said that they, 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 they got themselves together as they had been cast out of the city. And listen, they were cast out of the city. There were specific shrines that were built there. And so their relatives will bring food. Okay? But you see, because the relatives didn't want to con did, did not want to contact leprosy, because it was bad, these people the lepers were supposed to have ropes tied on their feet. So when your, your wife or your husband or your relative is bringing food to you, he will from a distance conduct the rope and pull it. When you pull back, now he knows you are alive. Then he comes close, a little bit close, a few meters away, and then he puts food and runs away very fast. Now you, you will come back, you Wash out and go and take food and eat. Are you following? Imagine that kind of torture. 
this is what this man, these men were going through. They were set aside outside the city. But there's something that happened in the city of Samaria. The Bible says there were hunger. There was hunger in the city. There was famine in the city. Praise God. And so, this man, in the midst of hunger and famine, the Bible says that the enemy came and surrounded and besieged the city and put his camp and camped around the entrance of the city, just close to the leprous. Hallelujah. So when they had looked at each other in the city, they thought if we go in the city, we're going to die. If we stay here, we'll die. If we go to the camp of the Assyrians, we'll also die. But chances are that if we don't die in the camp of the Assyrians, we will survive because there, there is food. Hallelujah. Do you know the law of migration? I'm called the law of migration. How many of you would like to migrate from uh, Kenya to Somalia? Lift. Okay. Sijaskia mtu anasema kwamba ameenda anatafuta ameenda kutafuta eh vieti vya usafiri aende Somalia. Kwa nini amtaki kwenda Somalia? Sikia mtu nao lift up your hand. I I open international doors. Mtu anasema, "Amen. I release you to uh, to to Canada. Amen. I release you to America. I receive. Now I release you to Somalia." Everybody is looking like, "What Somalia?" Somalia. No. Why don't you want to go to Somalia? Because of the law of migration. How many of you know the law of migration? Elements will always move. Okay? From a place of lower concentration to a place of higher concentration. Hallelujah. So, migration will push you to move from a place where there is no opportunities or lesser opportunities to a place where there is greater opportunities. Hallelujah. That's why nikisema leo kwamba sasa Mungu anakupatia kazi kitui kule mashambani karibu na Tarakanithi kule kule chini. Kule ushago ya ukweli ya kitui na itonga kitui watu kule mwisho si hata said kule chini. Pata kazi ya 40k. Na ndeno unanambia um, but kuna pia hapa Nairobi kazi ya 25. Utasema pastor I better go for 25. Why? Because you know I'll get this 25. I love badai. Kuna other opportunities around. Sinikweli. Okay. So these men, they understood the law of my migration. So they developed desire in them. Listen. You cannot make a proper decision except you have a proper desire. Someone say desire. Ah, oh, okay. Hallelujah. So you got to develop a desire and want that transformation. Do you want transformation? Listen, transformation is not number one. You must understand it's not a one night thing. Okay? And number two, it's not for people who are lazy. Am I preaching? Why don't you lift up a minute, uh, your hand in a minute and just speak in the spirit, pray in the spirit and speak in tongues. Somebody... In the mighty name of the Lord, declare, Father, transform me. Lord, I need transformation. I pray today, lay your hand on me and transform my mind, transform my thoughts, transform my spirit and my soul and my body for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Transformation. Amen. So, um, from Developing desire it simply means that you gain access okay to mental capacity that can navigate through discernment and make a proper choice. Okay? Can I preach in Swahili Mosmo? Iko watu ambao Unaambia, hey, unenda town. Jogo road iko na jam. Enda na Mombasa road. Jamaa atasema, huyu ni mjanja sana. Huyu anataka nikae kwa jam. 
because their mental capacity may quite trained kuwa stubborn na kuopose kila kitu have you ever found people about their mentality is so strong and very stubborn they are thought wame from thought patterns ambazo ziko ziko so negative hello to an extent kwamba hata ukimpatia pesa elfu moja ombe hey sasa uh, please take this one ara kuangalia sema kwa nini why 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 are you giving me you be like i'm just blessing him. no 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 you you must be bewitching me Bana square There's a story there's a man of God called Douglas Murray he preached for us in 1993 I don't know where you were you guys in 1993 Okay How many of you are already maggots <laughs> You had transformed into butterflies in the... So this man preached for us okay Now he was giving us a story and an example he says that there was a man who went to the forest to hunt and this man got bees and very nice honey so with this bucket he harvested a lot of honey okay got a bucket full of nice honey and came with it now as he was traveling back to his home inside the forest the uh, he didn't know but then he fell into a ditch a very a very deep ditch okay it was not without it was without water but it was very deep he couldn't come out so he fell with this bucket on his head and this man was now explaining he says that the rains were coming then suddenly they began the, the rain started falling so somebody was passing by also he, this person had also a business the other side and he had somebody crying in the pit saying oh please help me help me help me so the guy comes and does this oh sorry and i'm sorry okay then we say sorry he said now um, let me go and bring a rope and help you says so yes so the guy goes and brings rope then he lowers the rope he tells this man now tie your honey so that i can pull it out and put it here then i'll bring the rope to you then you now uh tie yourself and then climb say so the guy is like <laughs> you, you want to rob me of this honey i knew it you are wicked you want to take and run away with my honey so that i may die so the guy tries to help and help and nothing happens so he decides to abandon because it's raining abandon the rope there and runs off then the guy continues to cry help help another man comes say oh boss sorry you are down there so now uh, why don't you um tie the honey on the rope so that i may pull it out and then i put it here then i return the rope back to you so that you tie yourself on the waist then you come out he's like ha ha you are like the other one this guy and the waters are on the ankles. Praise God. So he's stubborn because his mentality has been trained to be stubborn. Are you following? And he did that until the last one when he came, he said, ah. he said now please then if, if you are still, let, let me try the honey and come bring it out. Then you says, no, 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 you are like the other ones. So the man now says, okay, he was so very patient. He says, well, then tie yourself. I pull you out. Then, as you come out, I tie myself and go in as you hold the rope. Then when I'm inside, you tie the hand and pull it out. Then you tie me. He says, ah, you want to go back into the ditch and eat my honey. We have people like that. Hallelujah. Who are extremely stubborn. Let's go. You are telling them, ha, ah, when you get a job, the first thing to do, hallelujah, honor God with your first fruit. It's like, <laughs> I knew you, you are like those pastors in Nairobi. You want to have this way of no son. It's like, eh. Okay, tithe, payment of tithe is a good thing. It will secure your, it's like, <laughs> 10 percent, 10 what? Do you know how paying tithe when you have a hundred shillings is easy than when you have a hundred thousand shillings? But all oh, ten thousand to go to this to this man of God. No, 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 no. Yeah, pana. I think he tithe, in fact, with your old testament. In fact, now that's when you now start reasoning. 
with the scripture and going online and looking for every nonsense on YouTube to advise your soul. You have a stubborn what? Mentality. Am I teaching somebody? So you can, until you have, you have your mindset changed, you cannot have proper thought patterns. So your desire will be diverted. Am I preaching somebody? So these people, the lepers, they said, well, they had a mentality called enough is enough. Say enough is enough. Come on, somebody say enough is enough. Enough with this suffering. Hallelujah. Say enough is enough. Enough with this challenge. Until you come to a, men- to a place where your mentality is enough is enough. You cannot make a decision out of a situation. There are people who get comfortable with their um, challenge. They'll be like, ah, this sickness of mine. I got it, I think it's in 2012. And uh, God has been faithful. Eh? This sickness of? God has been? Where does the faithfulness of God come with you having a continuous sickness? You are managing. Huh? Nigerians say we are managing. How are you, sir? How is your business? Uh, sir, we are managing. We are managing. Praise God. You will not manage. You will make it in the name of Jesus Christ. Say tonight, the anointing of God is upon me, upon my life, upon my mind. I develop a proper desire into the things of God, into transformation in Jesus' name. So the lepers, after they say enough is enough, they say, if we see, we will enter into the city, then the famine in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we also die, because nobody was bringing food. Possibly their relatives had died, okay? Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians, the armies of the Syrians. If they save us life, we shall live. They knew they would go there, and after that they were slaves, they Okay. So they left and they went. Okay? Ne- meaning, they made a decision. They developed desire, made a decision. Praise God. Uh, many times, transformation is just a, stra- a strange language until somebody will develop desire, until somebody will make a decision. Okay? You have to be intentional in the place of decision making. Don't make a decision to get married because you think you are now old. Eh? You see the way people make decisions. Eh? Hello? You go back to your phone book. Kumbi, you saved the number of your boyfriend you were 12 years ago. When I to my message, hi, do you remember me? The man moved on. He possibly has a, a, a child in, in high school. You're supposed to be. You are sending a message. Hi, how are you? Ata na shanga wini nani? Ata kumbuki? Kumbu uli musev. Why did you refuse him during those days? Don't make a decision to get married because you are old. Make a decision because it's proper, it's right. And you have found the right person or you've been found by the right person. Hello. Am I preaching? Yeah. <laughs> Vijana oe. Vijana um, I almost say tibim. Banas, I don't know what tibim is. Eh? <laughs> huh? Hello. Yeah. Listen. Let me advise you, okay? Do not enter into a relationship if you're not ready for marriage. Yeah. Uh, this one, that's take it to quite serious. Take it to Kujaribu. Kujaribu, don't scare. I'm just going to ask you, if you saw the Kujaribu, now you're asking about the end of flower. Is it? Is it butterflies? Ask you, will you never? So I think it's good to be close to him or her. Ah, uh-uh. that's a bad thing. Assess your life, okay? Look at the kingdom mandate over your life. Pursue purpose. Pursue your calling. Then at a certain stage, we'll assess and say, well, now I need to settle down. 
Don't, by you settling down, don't go back and look at those ex, excess, excess. Don't. So, for you to help your life, save yourself by ensuring that there is no X on your destiny. X in a manager council, eh? Are you following? Hey, in Kwanza Nairobi. I've seen Kwanza Nairobi kuna shida sana. Hii mahubiri ni mzuri ile ya ushago lakini Nairobi. Kwanza na kama na kwaza watu hapo. Bwana swear. It's true because many of our many men of God, okay? Many people that God was to entrust great abilities in their lives. They were divine by demonic relationships. So I think in 28, it settled down. Meanwhile, let me assess. So you are eating their money. Hmm? We are Nalipa rent. We are Nalipa Uber. Kwenda to rivers. Kuna mgini ni wahab, the hub. Wakupeleka the hub kunywa. And then kuna mgini waku kutuma pesa nyumbani. Mama mesema. So our to attack when you want to settle down, some of these people, their money, you know, money is a spirit. Their money was holding your destiny and tying some abilities down. So when Angalia says, Ah, we are to see ah, we see serious. Kwanza we are to be serious. We kwanza na na monanga sana ni is is a player. Do nanza kujua ni player. We are mungine na monanga ni kama ah, we we are kwanza na monanga ni kama aju mungu sana. Sai ni attack. Somebody who is very serious with God. This is, is, is an assessment you are supposed to do before you open your heart to somebody. Say tonight, my story must change. In Jesus' name. So when you enter into a relationship with the wrong person, the right person, and many kilometers away, spiritually, chances are that he will never find you. Huh? Young men, don't be married to knives. You marry wives, not knives. Kunatu, they married what? Sasa wanavumilia. Husbands on a feature pesa. Wako na secret account. Oke amuka. Bibi naya na mkanga mapema kucheku kwa pockets. Kuangalia wallet kuna umaji. Anangalia SMS. You see this insecurity things, eh? What's wrong with password? Password because you are insecure. And you put password because there are some things. Are you, are you getting these things? Eh? Hello? Am I preaching somebody? Hallelujah. So you must make a decision. When you, if you ever think you will get married, and you know who you need to on a fanya, usikubali la kujua kwa life yako, usikubali michezo kwa life yako. Marriage is a serious what? Serious destiny purpose. So Rusu nini? I was speaking to my sons here. I know. Najua kuna ingi nata wana sumbuliwanga sana. You see, like the way Keith is handsome. Do you, eh? This is my son. Very handsome. Possibly, kuna auto na ngalenga wito ni kipiga na yself ni ko okay. Don't allow. Burn as well. Na kama ngoli fanya iyo, fanya nini? Cut it off. Okay? Okay, I don't know why I went there, but I hope that these young men and ladies are getting blessed. I release your marriage in the name of this Christ. Any one of you that messed, 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 and now the enemy has used that legally to hold your marriage, I release your right marriage. I release your husband. I release your wife. I release them today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Decide, be intentional. Then another thing is that accept change. Okay? Accept what? Accept change. You cannot transform if you are not a person that accepts change. I asked you, do you, do you have anybody who has a, a Nokia 310, that gray phone? Eh? Kulikuwa na, zilikuwa nga tatu, zilikuwa mbili kwanza, alafu badewa kanza kuleta zile cover za white, 
na black. But initially it was ash gray and dark gray. Sini kweli, wangapi anakumbuka hizo siku? Mimi I used to have Siemens A35. Kalikuwa kanaka hivi na na fimbo mbele hii. Kulikuwa na Ariel. I was given by my sister. Bwana asifiwe. During that time air team air time ndio upate air time lazima unue ya 250 250 nilikuwa anga chini na kukuwa na mpesa the year 2001 no mpesa so unanua air time ukiweka hivi ukiuliza ukiuliza the only way to inquire about how much you have was to call 144 they are calling ni 14 bob zimeenda unasikia vile safari kwa mali tutesa nafikiri litarejirikia wapi ni kwetu si tunatarajia tunatarajia eh you know your number bana swear and then wakati umepiga simu ikifika 20 shillings you can't make unaambia you have less insufficient eh imagine so we kununua airtime unanua ya 10 bob sahi hata 5 bob eh unaweza pata kwa shop ala hata hata mpesa unaweza nua 2 bob si ndio ni 5 5 eh Hakuna tu bob. <laughs> eh? Paisa anaweza buy a tu bob. Come on, five. Data hata unakopa airtime. Hiyo time kukopa ikuanga. Hey, they were very strict. So kulikuwa na Safaricom na nyingine ilikuwa inaitwa Zain. Bana square. So Safaricom alikuwa anajita the better option. Zain ilikuwa inaitwa inajita aje. I don't know. Sijui nini ni. Hmm? Ken, eh, ilikuwa cancel. Cancel ndiko kuja Zain na Love Cell Tel. Alafu gani? These guys, oh, tumezaliwa 2014. <laughs> ah. So, you see, you must accept what? Change. Okay? You must accept what? Change. Good change. Okay? You must accept change. For you to be transformed, accept change. Don't refuse to hold on to the things of the past. Isaiah 43 verse 19 from verse 18 he says that 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 the things can, 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 can you read Isaiah um remember not. Look at what he's saying. Remember not what? the former things neither consider do not ponder do not have in your heart the things of old yes they were glorious in their days but now there are already new fashions that have come up eh bana swe sai mama anaweza nyoa kichwa iwe bald lakini ukimwona anakaa kwa nyuele za mzungu I remember I will see my sister sikifika Christmas walikuwa wanachukua a piece ya pot ile cooking pot eh wanavunja kigae alafu wanaweka kuni juu mama ka wanachoma alafu make a vaseline mingi kwa kichwa alafu sasa ikiwa hot wanapitisha hapa juu kwa nywele mara kadhaa wakichana wanaona ni blood dry wakitembea wakifanya kichwa hivyo wanaona wana, wamefika ilikuwa staili ya usiku shaving ilikuwa ni makazi am i am i teaching somebody hallelujah viatu ilikuwa ni ile inaitonga moccasins eh kulikuwa na viatu zikuwa zinaitwa tanga kuna moka alafu kuna zingine zikuwa zinaitwa omega then kulikuwa na zile zinaitwa platform vile unatembea kama sol peke yake ni kama 4 inches Bana swear. I follow him. Hallelujah. But then God by his mercy he has allowed us to experience new innovations, new changes, new things. Sindio? Hello? So you must accept change. Say here. God is going to help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now because of time Acquire and develop the mind of God. Philippians chapter number 2 verse number 5. Philippians 2 verse 5. Please open. God is helping somebody here today. 
Listen, this is not just stories. I'm trying to travel with you in your time so that I may help you to come out into the time of God. So I'm not wasting your time. Am I wasting your time? Hallelujah. It says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So acquire and develop the mind of God. What is the mind of God? The mind of God is a mind that is superior. It carries proper thoughts. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I think it's in Jeremiah, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts that are, is it Jeremiah 29, 11? Let's open to 9-11, Jeremiah. I want to teach you something. I want you to be transformed. This thing of you coming to church, that's because you feel guilty. It's not good. Your coming here must be giving you access to transformation. That After the message, after the worship, you go home, you are a changed man. You are a better version of yourself. So when the enemy comes with the terrible stuff against you, you'll be like, ah, by the word of God, I command you ours. You face situations with power. You are encouraged. You catch fire. Hallelujah. And are you following? God is going to help us in Jesus' name. He says, for I know the thoughts that I have toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So God wants, he says, he has thoughts toward you, which are good, they are not evil. When you develop the mind of God, you have thoughts of God. Okay? You make decisions properly in sync with the plan and the season of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. May God help you in Jesus' name. Very quickly, number five, you put your inner man to work. Listen. The Bible says that who is able to do exceedingly. Is it Philippians 2? Huh? Ephesians 3.20. Is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think, ask or think according to what? According to what? Say power. Power means ability. Capacity. Okay? So God is able to do but his doing is dependent with the power that is in you. In other words, you are inner man. You must summon and activate. Don't allow your inner man to lie dormant. Hallelujah. You know, the, it's told in the Bible that the disciples were traveling in the sea and Jesus was sleeping. And so they met this uh, tempest and they were crying, trying to help them and save themselves. Then one remembered that we have a savior and a master under the deck and he's sleeping. They went and woke him up and said, hey, don't you care that we are perishing? So he stood up and said, hey, he spoke to the winds, said, now be peace, be still. And they looked at him and they said, wow, what kind of man is this? That he can even speak to the sun, the moon, and even the winds and the storm and it calms. Praise God. Listen, your inner man, there's a spirit man within you, okay, that carries capacity to handle things in alliance with God. Hallelujah. So don't allow that inner man to lie dormant. Summon that inner man. Command that inner man to be at work. Hallelujah. Command the inner man to be at work. Some of you, your inner man wakes up or is called by demonic altars. That's why you dream terrible dreams. Huh? Hallelujah. That you are sleeping and then in the night you are dreaming that you are running in the village. Somebody is chasing you. Your inner man is troubled. The devil wants to arrest your inner man. You must get to a place where you develop ability to speak, to command and summon your inner man to be at work. He must be alert. Your inner man must not sleep. Say tonight, my inner man must be awakened and work for me in the name of Jesus Christ. It is that inner man that can actually relate with the things of the Spirit, with the programs of God. Are you following? Put him to work. And then be result-oriented. 
be goal focused. Okay? If I call you here and I tell you, uh, what is your what are your goals? Be like, uh yaki ningumu. Ningumu. Goal. Can I ask one here? Huh? What is your goal? Ni ulize mtu hapa, si one chini atasema. Sema, eh basi, goals. Hizo si tufanya nga kitamba, sasa hivi we are just, you know, we are trusting God. What is your goal? Ah, pastor, I'm just trusting God. I'm just believing God. Some of you, you say, ah, I want to fast. I want to fast. Hii nasikia ni fast. Nasikia tu kuna fasting ni fast. So you fast 3 days. Unajiteza 3 days without food. You're taking water. Then you ask you asked, what were you praying for? Mm, ah, I was just dealing with some things. What are these things? Ah. It was just a general fasting. What? You troubled yourself. You must have a call. Be result oriented. Look beyond the edges and capture a vision. Capture and vision something that you want. Then walk with speed or run towards it. Be goal oriented. When you are goal oriented, you'll be focused. When you are goal oriented, you'll avoid distraction. Hallelujah. If you are traveling from here to town, you get to feather, okay? Stage. And you meet your the old friend. Okay? Like my daughters who go to Sydney to, to, to buy, purchase things, or buy stuff, or you are going for an interview. Something very important. And then you meet somebody at feather, and then this person begins to engage you, tells you, well, just take kidogo up and take a to onge kidogo. Tambia, you have my number. Call me later. I have something important to do. If you are not focused, utasema, hey, by the way, hata nilikuwa nime kumisi such a tukai. Mnaanza kutembea kwa mguu Taj Mall, nenda Cabanas, mnaanza kwenda sio Kimao while you are going to Nairobi. By the time unakuja ku realize ni saa kumi. Opportunities were seized. I following. So you must be results oriented and goal focused. You must ensure that before you begin a matter, you have known the results that are coming. Am I speaking to somebody? Say tonight, I receive the grace to be transformed in Jesus' name. Very quickly, I want to share with you three things on how you you will be transformed. How to to be transformed. Number one, engage fervently the ministry of the word. Engage fervently the ministry of the word. Am I preaching to somebody here? Say tonight, I receive grace to engage the ministry of the word. Open with me in the book of Acts chapter number 4, verse number 6. Acts chapter number 6, verse 4, sorry. Acts 6, verse 4. Very quickly, I have like, I have like two, three minutes. Acts 6 and verse number 4. The Bible says, But we will give ourselves continually. The word, the key word here is continually. To what? To prayer and to the ministry of the word. Praise God. The ministry of the word is important for you to engage. What is the ministry of the word? The ministry of the word is the wholeness of the word of God that is able to deliver all the dimensions that are supposed to sponsor you into your destiny in life here. Beginning from the dimension of faith. Now, Faith is. Okay? What is faith? Faith is there. Say the substance. The substance of things hopeful. And the evidence of things not yet seen. So faith is given you by the word. The Bible says that faith cometh. Not but by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. So faith will be given you through the word of God. So the ministry of the word begins with faith and then substantive changes that will give you things that you desire. For example, creative miracles. Okay? You've never known something will happen in your life like this. Nobody in your family ever rose to that level. But you've engaged the word. You've declared the word. Father, I am the head. I am not the tail. Father, I am going far. Your thoughts toward me are good thoughts. Praise God. So you engage the word and suddenly your life opens. Hallelujah. 
victory. All these things is in the means. So you must engage fervently, relentlessly, pursue and engage the ministry of the word. When you engage the ministry of the word, you will get illumination. Praise God. Same illumination. You are transformed. You are metamorphosized. Jesus Christ, who the Bible says in the book of John chapter number 1, that he is the word. The Bible says that when he came to the mountain, to the hill of transformation, he was there for three days with his friends. And the Bible says that suddenly, there appeared to him Moses and Elias or Elijah. And when the disciples looked at, at Jesus, they realized that his visage and his body and his garments were as bright as a sun. They were illuminated. He received illumination on the mountain of transfiguration. I follow him. Hallelujah. So the word, you can actually be transformed by the word of God. One as well. Iko watu ambao wanajulikana tu wanatoka kwa familia ya wapumbavu kila mtu ni mjinga. Bwana asifiwe. Kila mtu ni na si matusi kila mtu ni mjinga hakuna kitu anaweza fanya hakuna mali alienda hata reasoning. Hata kifikiria ni ujinga tupu. Lakini wakati umeokoka then you engage the ministry of the word. Suddenly hata kama hukuenda mbali kimasomo unaanza ku reason kama wewe ni daktari. Naza kirizo ni kama kuna PG. Unanza kuwa, mind yako inakuwa transformed. Are you following? You have a renewed mind. A transformed mind. Your thinking is not altered by demonic forces of witchcraft. Sasa unakuwa we si pumbavu, unakuwa ni mwerevu. Receive grace to be transformed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May your mind be illuminated in Jesus name. Number two, how to be transformed. Number two, engage meditation. Many believers do not know the power of meditation. So, man, share him and by meditation, kwa watu ambao nafanyanga yoga. Huh? Neto yoga. Hello? Sema meditation. Sema meditation, my friend. Sema meditation, my son. What is to meditate? Is to engage your mind, okay? And think continually about a certain subject. Ah, hallelujah. When I read this, I said, oh God, I need the grace to meditate. When you sit down, listen, every week, have at least a time in a day, okay? That you will switch off your phone, Ata kama ni kweka flight mode. Switch off TV. Answer na 15 minutes, 10, uh, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, and then they progressively. Just get a subject. Okay? And think through scripture the possibilities of that subject. You are meditating. Okay? I hope this is helping you. Engage meditation. Let's look at Psalm chapter 19, verse 14. Psalm 19, 14. I want to show you something so that we wrap up and go. Psalm 19, verse 14. Okay. Meditation is a powerful tool that believers must put it to work. The Bible says that let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So God will listen to your words. God will also listen to the frequency of your mind when you meditate. Hallelujah. I follow you. The signal of your mind when you engage God through meditation is a language in the spirit. Say tonight, I will meditate. Genesis chapter 24 and verse number 663. Genesis 24, verse 63. Hallelujah. Genesis 24 and verses number 63. The Bible says that Isaac had gone 
went out to meditate in the field. Sometimes for you to find meditation to be helpful, you go sometimes to fields. Go to a boretum and just sit. Okay? Or go to Karura Forest, the prayer place, and then just sit. Hallelujah. And meditate. If your house carries trouble, because kuna watu nyumba yao, wakaibi kumeditate, wasikia, stima nalia, chui, chui, sama, ah, ime backing up, so inaku alter. Unaenda unapata iko zero point something. Unakumbuka, ah, oh, hallelujah. So Isaac went to the field when he was meditating. The moment he began meditating, that's when his eyes opened and he saw Rebecca coming. Kuna watu, your miracles will be released when you start meditating. You didn't hear me. Let me speak to this side. There are people whose miracles will be quickly released because of their meditation. Because when you meditate, you are engaging a few things. And I will give you this in a moment. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let's look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. <coughs> oh God help me the Bible says that this book of law of the law shall not depart out from your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and then thou shalt have good success so prosperity and good success is a result of meditation. Are you following? Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm chapter 1 verse 2 and Psalm chapter number 5 verse 1. Then I will give you a few points on meditation. Then I wrap up in this name. Psalm 1 verse 2. The Bible says, you can start from verse number 1. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. So that we may get the Blessed the man that uh, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Number two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Hallelujah. Say meditation. When you engage meditation, you will be transformed. You metamorphosize. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus had gone to do when he went to the mountain of transfiguration. Hallelujah. He went there to fast, but this kind of fasting was a place where he mingled with the possibilities of God through his word. Seated there, and the Bible says that John Peter and John and who? Huh? Okay, the Mbeko Kiswahili, Manaki Kuna Wimbo, Petero, Yakobana, Johanna, Sendio, Yakobani James, Aman Jacob, Jacobani, Huh? Sema to Kweli. So, they were looking at this man meditating, and suddenly they saw his life, everything around him. He became like the sun. When you meditate, you capture the power of God. The glory of God is given to sit within you. Hallelujah. It's in the meditation. There are some prayers you never pray when you are a person of meditation. Because you sit down and you mingle. You engage. You interact with the word of God. Hallelujah. This thing we see people meditating, eh? These people of the world, they meditate through the wall. Unajua how powerful meditation is? Kuna mtu ana meditate mpaka ameka ameangalia hivi for 40 days alifungua macho na patikana hivi is not eating ameka ameka miguu hivi. He's just watching across. Kumbe the man traveled, he went through the mountain, went and came back. He's in meditation. Now imagine these are doing with wicked powers. What of if you the carrier of the power of God, the creator of the ends of the earth, who does not faint and does not go grow weary. We, we are when you are meditating by his words, you will be a God. Hallelujah. You will be a God when things happen 
around you, all of them must cooperate in your favor. All things work together for good to those that God has called. They work for your good. Hallelujah. The challenge you are going through will work for your good. Meditation helps you. Helps you to capture the spirit in the word. We are told that the Bible, hallelujah, it was written. Huh? It was written by? By the spirit of God. Men who are inspired by the spirit of God wrote the Bible. Praise God. Hallelujah. They wrote the Bible. So if it is the spirit that wrote this thing, when you are meditating, you are engaging the spirit of the word. Do you know Paul? Do you know the, the name? Do you know Paul? The apostle. In the Bible, in the book of Exodus, we are told that two witches, two sorcerers, uh, two magicians engaged Moses and they tried to, you know, to, to fight Moses through their powers. And nobody knows throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament, who those those, those, those uh, wizards were. But when Paul is meditating, when he's writing, the spirit comes to him. He comes and he finds Moses. Then he sees Egypt. He sees Pharaoh. He sees the names of the people that, you see, meditation is a prerequisite for prophets. Hallelujah. So, Paul says, he writes, and he gives two names of the witches that were resisting Moses. Nobody else knew. Even in, the Gen in Genesis, even in Exodus, when Moses was writing, he had forgotten their names. Hallelujah. What is going to help us in this name? Just sit and give me the kiss. Give me, give me the kiss there. Okay? Let's go on. Say tonight, I receive grace to meditate. So number one, you meditate on the law of God. God is king. Every kingdom has law. God is the author of spiritual law and physical laws. If you want to prosper, you want to be righteous, there are, there are laws specifically given for you to be guided into the ways and the things of God. Are you following? Like the law of gravity. The law, all these are natural laws. We have laws of prosperity. The law of giving. All these laws. So we have spiritual and natural laws. Those that have been given by God. When you meditate, you meditate on the law of God. Psalm 119 and verse 97. Psalm 119 verse 97. God is going to help us in his name. The Bible says, Oh, how, oh, how love I the law. It is my meditation all the day. You meditate on the law of God. Wherever the corridors of greatness you want to go, we have laws that guide men in those realms. You meditate on these laws. Hallelujah. The law of healing, deliverance, things that you have been desiring. Hallelujah. You meditate. Hallelujah. Number two, you meditate on the testimonies and the works of God. Psalm 119 verse 99. 119 verse 99. The works of God and his testimonies. Hallelujah. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For, my, for the testimonies are my meditation. Here the things that people, that God did for other people, capture that thing and come to God and sit down in meditation. How God granted this lady a breakthrough in the finances. How peace came back to the marriage of this family. How healing was given to this lady. How this man got a job even without proper academic qualification. He is testifying, God did it for me. I saw God. I was prayed for. I believed God. 
and now God has changed my story. Ah, uh-uh. so God changed your story, and I've been believing God. So I come sit down in my time of meditation. I begin to meditate on the testimonies of what God did for you and of what God did for me. When you meditate on the testimonies, you access strength to pursue a miracle. Ah, hallelujah. In the book of First Samuel, First Samuel chapter number, chapter number 28, I think, the Bible says that David asked God, shall I pursue? Will I overtake? And God told him, sure pursue, for you indeed overcome, overtake and recover all. There are times you need to pursue your miracle. There are times you need to pursue your breakthrough. You don't just sit to receive. There are times you really need to pursue. You've done all. The Bible says, having done all, then stand. There are times you don't just sit to stand. You begin to walk. You've prayed. You've given. You believe God for a job. Now you move from company to company. Or you apply through online. You go for interview. You are moving. As you are moving, you are meditating of the possibilities of God. Of how God did testimonies that you've heard. That's why it's good for you to have testimonies. Test money. Money currency that you achieve or acquire when you are tested hallelujah receive your testimony in the name of Jesus God's work Psalm 77 verse 12 you meditate on the work of God how beautiful how awesome wewe who leave your poor? He says, Nikita Zama, Jinsi Wewe Mungu, who leave your Hallelujah. Talks about the creation, how he created the earth, how the birds are singing, how nature is so desirable in the eyes. The greatness of God. He says, And David inquired, let's look at Psalm chapter number 77. Psalm 77 verse 12 You meditate on the work of God All the sceneries All the agencies of creation Is for you to access And know the power of God Says we I will meditate also on thy work And talk of their doings Many people get discouraged Because they don't meditate there are people who even ask themselves, do we really have yes, yes, I just want, don't want to be a serious Christian and this thing. No, it's because you don't have that access. You don't meditate. You need to have develop within you the ability to meditate. Look at the work of God. Hallelujah. That's why it's good for you to go for nature walk. Sikingina toka toka in the chakra ranch. Angalia. Sikingina in the mountain. Panda Milima, Enda Kof, Enda Nairobi. Is it Gepa or National Park? Walk, National Park. Walk around, see the lions. Kuna watu wago Kenya. They have never seen a lion. We are not lion kwa person, no kwa picture. And you think you are civilized? Nenda angalia sipa venya naka. Ukuje utakuna, utashika kitu moja. Utangalia, eh? That's you to meditate. Oh, so that Simba hana mikono, so you need nashika nyama. You need nararua. Unaza to meditate of the greatness of the work of God. Hello, say tonight, I receive the grace to meditate. There are four levels of meditation. Number one, you begin by considering. You select the area of meditation. Number two. You focus on that area. You don't allow yourself to be diverted. You focus on the area of meditation. And number three, you begin to reflect. Think continually on that area that you have chosen to meditate. Hallelujah. Or ponder on it. Are you following? Hallelujah. Number one, you consider. Number two, focus. And number three, think, reflect, and ponder continually. Hallelujah. So in meditation, you must be, you must be, 
this must be continuous. You have to do it for a period of time. Kuna watu hata darasani wana lose. Unajua walimu anasema kwamba you only can give a student 35 minutes of concentration. So come and double lesson. Walimu anakuwa na shida sana. But you can train yourself, okay? Are you following? You train yourself. But you can sit down for 20 minutes, you're thinking for one thing and you don't allow any other thoughts to come. Listen, it may not be easy, but you train yourself and you put yourself to it until it starts working for you. Listen, there are possibilities that you will access that have never been anywhere around when you are a person of meditation. Are you following? The Bible says that then you shall you enjoy prosperity and good success. So there is a success that is called good success. It's not for ordinary people. It's for people who engage meditation. Ah! I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will engage meditation to be transformed your mind to shift and to be in the pattern in the image of God. You must begin to stand and steer up the abilities of your mind in the place of meditation. You will need, when you're meditating, you'll need to do it silently. Sometimes, just put on instrumental music. A soft, soothing gospel. Instrumentals without words that can attract or divert your attention. Soothing and just be at a place of meditation. Meditation and see God carry you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, carry me on. Holy Spirit, carry me on. You are carried with all the ghosts. To the realms of power, carry me on. To the realms of glory, your courage as you meditate. I pray for you today that you will rise, you will activate, and enter into the real church. You'll be transformed in Jesus' name. Lastly, after you engage the means of the word, engage meditation, lastly, you speak. You begin speaking, being confessing. You profess and speak what you want and what you are. Okay? But as well. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life will stage. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I, I, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You begin to confess. You begin to speak what you saw, what you saw. You begin to speak it. Now, when you're speaking, you're speaking by the Spirit. Let's go back to, to uh, the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse number. Um, is, is it 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 18? It says you are transformed from glory to glory by the spirits of the Lord. But we all with open face beholding us in our glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed, are metamorphosized, are transformed into the same image of God from glory to glory, even as by the spirit. So when you are speaking, you're speaking by the Spirit. You begin to be changed. Suddenly, you would rather want every dormant account, bank account that you had. It begins to light up. What happened? You are transformed. You engage transformation and things began to happen around you. Suddenly, ile mtiano ulikuwa unafanya ukianguka ukifail ukifail. Suddenly unapita you even remember everything when you were in class. No, it's because your mind is alert and you have been transformed. You are in the image of Elohim, the creator of the universe. I want you to stand up on your feet. We are going to pray tonight. Oh Lord, transform me. That must be your prayer point tonight. 
Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Oh Lord, transform me. Oh Lord, transform me. Oh Lord, transform me. In the name of Jesus Christ, transform me into the image, into the version, into the great the version. Transform me. Lift up your voice, begin to pray. Oh Lord, transform me. Father, we thank you and in bless your name. We ask tonight, the Lord, you shall transform us. The Lord, you shall change us. The Lord, you shall pre present us, O oh God, into the system of change that only you can do. We avail ourselves to you and ask you, Father, that you may transform us. Father, that you may change us, O oh God. Transformation as key into a new season. Lord, we ask tonight that you may transform us into a new season. Transform us into the place of power, into the place of glory, into the place of results in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. God is going to transform somebody tonight. When you are transformed, the things around you also shift and change. There are some things that will begin to escape and leave you. There are some friends that will leave your life. There are some things, levels that will just push themselves out from you. There are some money, you will, they will now not come into your empesa. There are some levels you enter into, some money, big money begin to come to your life. Why you are transformed in this name. Kuna nguo utatamani, hata ingine nakaka magani, lakini hauta ifa kwa nini niya watu niya levo ya chini, you have been transformed. Butterfly level from maggot level. Butterfly level from the pupa level. Receive the grace to be at the butterfly level. May your life be beautified. I say may your life be beautified. I say may your destiny be beautiful. In the mighty name of the Lord. I say may your life be beautified. May your destiny reflect the beauty of the Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bible says beauty for ashes beauty for ashes there are some people here who lost you have lost almost every good thing in your life and because of that life has become so bitter you are so bitter you are so some of you lost things to friends people you trusted and you call them friends you lost things to them valuables to them tonight I present an answer to you tonight let go every bitterness in your heart must be lifted god is going to change your life he's going to change your story you are going to move from the place of heart from ashes to beauty beauty from ashes in the mighty name of the lord i declare the anointing of god to be upon you the bible says that the lord bestow upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes i prophesy tonight where you are suffering where you are going through situations and distress where you had grown and become bitter tonight as you release the bitterness god is giving you a crown of beauty for ashes beauty for ashes shall be your story in jesus name father we thank you lord bless your name we give you glory in jesus name we pray want us to say quietly to our online um church have an praise online god bless you in Jesus' name. Everyone else, I want you to live.